What was once a family home now lies in ruins. On the morning of February 7th, the earthquake destroyed the Shaheen's home. Tunjai Shaheen's mother was buried in the debris and seriously injured. She died a short time later. For these feelings and the situation, there are no words. We visit the village of Tokar in southeastern Turkey. The region is remote, and people here are poor. One of the collapsed buildings here was only a year old. The Shaheen family home was older, Tunjai tells us. His father, who wasn't at home on the night of the disaster, only realizes on inspecting the rubble how inadequate the building materials were. Look here. These thin steel struts were supposedly holding the load-bearing supports together. This really should be a lesson to us. But people only pay attention when they hit their heads. Once the pain subsided, they get careless again. These materials should have been checked by the authorities. I hope from now on construction in these high-risk areas will be monitored more strictly. Whether or not it's wise to rely on Turkish construction authorities is another matter. Hassan Aksungur has his doubts. He's chairman of the Chamber of Structural Engineers in the port city of Adana. The phones haven't stopped ringing since the earthquake. His team's expertise is in high demand as residents want their homes inspected. They no longer trust the state authorities. While touring a housing estate affected by the quake, Aksungur discovers cracks and facades everywhere. These could just be cracks in the plaster. As long as load-bearing parts aren't affected, the building could still be habitable. But it's hard for me to judge at first sight. The government has warned critics of its earthquake policy against spreading what it calls fake news. But people like Aksungur know that the government legalized millions of buildings that were constructed without planning permits. And many others were built higher than approved. It's about business, profit. Look, these apartments sell for the equivalent of 250,000 euros at least. Earthquake precautions can't compete with a greed for profit. Deadly quakes could occur again at any time, Aksungur warns the residents of Adana. But many seem to be in denial about this already. They told us that our house was okay, but that we should wait for the demolition on the neighboring property. Then we can return. They can't just carry on as they were after this disaster, says Aksungur. There has to be a completely new beginning. In risk areas like this, everyone has to work together. Citizens, urban planners, architects, sociologists and politicians. We need a consensus on reconstruction. And, if possible, it must be ensured that we never build directly over the fault lines again. Back in the village of Takar, the residents are afraid to return to their homes. The authorities have sent the villagers one tent. Those who couldn't get a space there have built their own out of plastic sheets. It's hard to say how long they will have to stay in the tents, but everyone agrees the houses of the future will have to be built differently. From now on, we'll only build one-story houses, the way it used to be. But safer buildings are not enough, says Tunjai Shaheen. I hope that from now on there will be more education about the dangers of earthquakes. Tunjai pays his respects to his mother at the local cemetery. If only everyone had taken the earthquake danger seriously, he tells us, his family might have been spared this tragedy.